Welcome to Highway to Helms in three, two, one. Another day, another dollar as a holler to the world. I love the way I'm living, love the Gucci, love the girls. Love the parties and the clubs, love models and hot tubs. Love the German engineer is set on deep dish dubs. Love the tour around the world, entertaining the fans. I love walking through the airport, taking pictures, shaking hands. Every day from me's an oyster, cracking open, find a pearl. I love the way... <sighs> what it is. What it was. Welcome to another episode. Today is May the... 28th. 8th. May 28th. See what we did there? We just tag teamed that date. Um, welcome to another episode of Highway to Helms with my co host, the Big D, Mike Maverick. The D could just, whatever, just, you know, use your imagination. Okay, that, that can mean anything. It's, it's been known to mean a lot of things. Known to mean a lot of things. Anyway, let's first off, let's thank our sponsors. Got to thank ShaneHelms.com. I mean, hell, I sponsor this more than anybody. We also got to thank figure4apps.com. They are the producers, the originators of the Shane Event, the Shane Event iPhone app. If you uh, would have had this iPhone app, it would have took you to the Omega Show, door to door. It'll tell you where I'm at. has a great soundboard, got some silly photo games you can play. Uh, pretty neat, nifty little app. I'm a wrestling fan. If you're a promoter, you're a wrestler. If you're a wrestling fan, you need this app. Find out all the wrestling events near you, not just... The big dogs, but them little dogs, and them medium-sized dogs. Same concept for I'm a fight fan. Same concept for I'm a race fan. Same concept for I'm a Comic Con fan. And we also got a thing last but not least, HighSpots.com. Uh, these guys are everywhere. Anything you need, DVDs, T-shirts, posters, keychains, necklaces. You need nipple rings. I don't know what they got. They got, man, they got a little bit of every stuff. HighSpots.com. And there he is popping them on the screen. You can find me at Shane Helms Com. You can find the Big Daddy Mike Mav at Big Daddy Mike Mav on Twitter. He's also on Facebook. He doesn't really understand the t Twitter too much. Takes too much effort. Too much effort to tweet. When you're too lazy to tweet, you might want to reevaluate That's your life. That's a new fucking level of laziness. Too lazy hey, to tweet. What can anyway, I say? We're I'm fresh off a very uh, successful Omega event. Um, but before we get in that, I guess we got to say rest in peace to Hector Garza, uh, 43 years old, I think they read. Something like that. Hate to hear that. I didn't uh, I don't think I ever worked with him or anything like that, but I know a lot of my friends did. And um, so. Was he uh, in WCW when you were there? Um, I don't think he was. If he, if he was, I don't remember seeing him. You know, uh, a lot of the luchadors started to kind of fade out when I came in. Was he the one that would do that big corkscrew off the top? Yeah, I believe so. It was either, that was either him or... Tarzan somebody. No, Lismark. That was either him or Lismark. No, it was him then. It was Lismark? No, it was, it was Hector Garza. Garza? Okay. Yeah, I remember thinking, I think it was Hector would do that quick script. i never seen that before him, I don't think. He was a big dude to be doing that too. Yeah, he was a big old luchador. A lot of those luchadors were a little bit smaller than their American counterparts. Yes, that's terrible what happened to him. Was it he got cancer? Is that what I heard? I think. I don't even, I don't know the full story. Anybody dying at 43 is a tragedy, though. Yeah. I hate when somebody says that, uh, and it wasn't in this case, I was just talking to, not just now, but uh, talking to uh, Rocky, and I can't even think of his name, last name. He works in New Japan, works in Lucha Libre, USA. But uh, you know, when they say somebody dies of natural causes, it seems like, like dying is the most unnatural fucking <laughs> It seems like that's the end of nature. Like, what the fuck is natural about dying? That's well, fucking unnatural as seeing shit. As, seeing as how we all got it coming, I guess it, it's natural in that sense. <laughs> natural causes. What does that mean? You weren't run over by a bus or something? Something got your ass. Whatever it was. Don't matter now. See, now, now to me, it seemed like if, uh, you know, not to make light of the situation, but just going off what I'm saying, like if you got struck by lightning, that's, natural. that's dying of natural causes. And like if you get in a car accident with a carload of circus midgets, that would be a freak accident. <laughs> there we go. There we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here all week. The comedic style of the Big Daddy Mike Mav. Anyway, uh, but we are fresh off another successful Omega event. We raised thousands of dollars for the East Wake High School wrestling team. Hopefully they'll get that mat that they desperately need. Get them on their winning ways. Uh, that was a great show, man. I had a great... Uh, I had a pretty good, had a pretty good match. I don't want to say great, sitting and pat myself on the back too much, but I had, I had a good match. It was excellent. Was it good? Oh, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, if I ever 
I got I finally got out of a match with C.W. Anderson without getting spine busted apart. Only to get my damn jawbone relocated with that damn super kick. What is it with that guy? He brings it. What can why I tell he, you? Why does he hate me? He hates you. He hates me. He likes me. He just enjoys like inflicting pain upon my person and bodies. I think what he likes is kicking you in the face. Jesus. And like I was all pumped up on adrenaline after the show, you know. You know how it is after you do a successful show and all the good crowd. The crowd that crowd great. was great. The crowd was great. On the ride home, the H two H waitress, uh, she goes, How are you feeling after that super kick? You know, and the adrenaline's all up. I'm like, oh, I, you know, I'm okay, it's not too bad. But the next day I get up to eat breakfast and it's like uh, 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 what is going on here? CW, I'm gonna get your ass one day. One of these days. One, one of these days. Bam. Right, right in the kisser. kisser. But uh, we had a really good, really good show. Um, first match, Adam Page, Mickey Gambino. Second match uh, was somebody. It was Caleb Conley and, and Jake the Man, Man Scout, the Man Jake Scout, Man. Scout, Jake. You Man. know he was on a high. You know Jake was on a high. The Boy Scouts have got a lot of good news uh, that day or the previous day, so he, he was on a roll. Uh, next match was what? Uh, Trevor Lee. Trevor Lee Drew. and what does Drew call himself now without the mask? The artist formerly known as Chiva, I guess. I don't, know. I don't know. That's how I'm because I keep saying Chiva. I can't think of anything. I, 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 I don't. Even, I can barely remember his name. Is Drew? That match was interrupted. Yes, it was by some guys that hate. They hate gimmicks and pro wrestling. They're wrestlers. These guys love wrestling. They love pro wrestling. But if you wear a mask and a cape, so I'm. Uh, I'm guessing you might be on they their might radar. Be hinting at somebody. Yeah. Though. Anyway, I didn't get to see it. I heard they beat their ass though. That was pretty much what happened. I would call it a piss pounding. A piss pounding? Yes. A pound of piss out of somebody? What, what, are, what do them guys call themselves? Who? The piss pounders? Yeah. That's what they're going to be referred to as for this show. That's not a bad name, the actually. piss pounders. <laughs> then uh, we had a really good match next one. Uh, the CNC Russell Factory. Caprice oh, Coleman yeah. Cedric Alexander against Davey Richards and Kyle O'Reilly. Um, matter of fact, it might still be going on. I don't know. They, I, when, they were there when we left the building that hey, night. Hey, boys, get a time cue. No, man, they uh, they put some time on the clock and beat each other's ass. I was very happy. We got uh, the American Wolf, Davey Richards, and Kyle O'Reilly, two, uh, two big Ring of Honor stars, got added to the show late. We really didn't get a chance to advertise them like we wanted to, but I was very glad to have them guys on the show. Yeah. But Davey's a little spark plug, man. He's about, you know, whatever, I don't know, five, seven, maybe five, He six. looks just like the Dynamite Kid. He does, don't he? Yeah. I... I I, I never met him before. I've seen him on TV, and I remember seeing him going, yeah, that guy's in good shape. He looks pretty big. And then when I met him, I went, he's one of, man, he's a but he will damn chop, kick, and punch your damn teeth apart. And tear your shit loose. Tear it loose. Then we had uh, the fifth match was the American Tiger against, um, who was it? Big Preston Quinn. Preston Quinn. A little bit of a size mismatch there. Size mismatch. I think the uh, the American Tiger got the victory, though. I think he finally pulled something out. This led to probably one of my favorite promos of all time, and uh, I, I can't really tell you why. You know, you're just going to have to watch it and enjoy it. But for me, on a personal level, and I'm talking about all the stuff I did with Rocky Flair, any of that, this was one of my favorite promos of all time. You said something hilarious in there that made me fall on the ground. What was it? Didn't you say to CW, your high school don't even exist anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you go to Zebulon? Well, that's where he's from, Zebulon. The Zebulon High School was absorbed by East Wake High School. I think he might have actually went to, like, North Johnson. That, but, was, uh, fun. that was funny, though, because I knew where that was going, and I think everybody in that building got that joke. Yeah, yeah, they did. I mean, it might not come across on the DVD, but if you're from Eastern Wake County, you know what that means. Yeah, so that, yeah, that was a regional joke. Regional. You got to know your audience. Know your audience. Then we had Rebby Sky against Casey Carlisle, uh, Mid Atlantic Heavyweight Championship match, Eric Royal against Rick Converse, and of course the main event was myself and Matt Hardy against Steve Carino and C.W. Anderson with special yes. ref, enforcer ref, who played a part in the match, Repo, Repo Ronnie, Ronnie from Lizard Lake Towing, one of True TV's highest rated shows. So when we get the DVD out, make sure you check it. Go to OmegaChampionshipWrestling.com. Omega, O M E G A, ChampionshipWrestling.com. And we'll have all the information coming out on that soon. It was a great event, man. I got to thank everybody for coming out to that. And that DVD is being produced courtesy of High Spots. Highspots.com. Commentary by Brad Stutz and the Gemini Kid. Uh, Chuck did commentary. Did you know Chuck that? did a little bit? Yeah. Ch uh, the Chuck whole called, time or just... No, he called... I saw him sitting over there calling a couple of the matches, though. So oh, you yeah. get a special treat. Chuck of Chinlock for Chuck fame. Chuck mm -hmm. Coates, Mad Max, if you would, uh, is doing guest commentary on there. So. We also brought in Amber Gertner to do commentary for the women's match. 
I really? Thought, I thought, yeah, for the. Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't see her over there. They uh, had a nice. She was. She was nice supposed setup. to. If it wasn't, uh, if it didn't pan out that way, I, I guess I apologize in advance. But uh, it could have. Uh, that the the ladies' match was the only match where I wasn't really sitting there watching. I don't remember what was going on. I had to you're get up. Big, and go. But you're not a big fan of women's wrestling in general. Right? It's not that I'm not a big fan of it. You just hate it. I just think it's overdone. <laughs> I think putting it on TV. No. Uh, uh, I don't know. I just. I think it's an. I think women's matches. I don't, I don't want to insult anybody here, but to me, a, a women's match is a gimmick match. I think if you have to make an effort to not insult Yeah, I'm trying to match. choose my words carefully here. I, I I would put it in the same category with a gimmick match. Yeah. You know, I would put it in there with a midget match or, uh, you know. I, think, a, I just think some girls have a, a hard time finding their identity. I think uh, some girl matches are, are very gimmicky, but if you watch like a jazz yeah, jazz, you know, jazz will go to your ass. Jazz will go to your ass. Oh, trivia for all you folks out here. I won two matches the whole time I was in ECW, oh, and well. one of them was over her. <laughs> I beat a girl, and then the second match, I beat some guy on the ring crew. There you go. We were um, rolling. You know, jazz, like, there's a girl in the indie scene called Jessica Havoc, man. She's a damn ass kicker. I mean, I know you haven't seen any of it, but if, there's, there's a couple good uh, girl companies. Shine stands out, you know, uh, Shimmer. Shimmer. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I don't want. It's not the girls necessarily. Like, I've seen girls' matches, like some of the Japanese women right. that go out there and kick ass. And, um, you know, I thought Molly Holly was great. I thought, uh, you know, I mean, there's, I think uh, Mickey James is really good. It's just, it's probably a lot of it's the way it's presented. I mean, you know, when you book it to where it looks like some kind of soft core porn, right. or, uh, you know, I, I think number one, that's degrading to the girls. And number two, I don't know how you can sell that because I can watch real porn for free. So, you know, I mean, if you come to a show to see wrestling and, you know, you're trying to maybe insult the fans a little bit by saying, well, here's two good-looking girls and they're really not going to do much much wrestling or anything, but they're out here to, you know, try to be a, a, a you know, a little peep show for you, then, you know, it's wasting time to me. It's a disconnect for me, too. Like, one thing I always liked about jazz is... She she looked like she she was walking to the ring and she was ready to fight. Yeah, you know, her hair was in the cornrows. You know, some you know a lot of the times. Cause she was. Yeah, I mean, you get these girls come out, man. They look like they're ready for a photo shoot. Yeah, and they're they dancing around, around and you know, you know. But that's probably what they're told to do, or that's what that's uh, the way they learned, or whatever. But it, then after the match, like they still look the same way as when they came in. Like there's no sweat, hair's not out of place, like. Uh, shit, well, my matches, I got my makeup running down my face, my hair is bleeding, my jaw's over here, I and mean, I'm dressed up like a superhero, in them, but you can tell I've been through something. After that super kick, I'm surprised your mask wasn't back here. I seen one picture, and I wish I should have downloaded it for the uh, video. Um, Where your head's was, missing? Yeah, he super kicked me, and you can't see my head at all. I was kind of wondering where it was going to be. You ought to come out there next week with a jack-o'-lantern on your head. Damn. Fucking Sleepy Hollow. Maybe the worst casting of all time. Why would you cast Christopher Walken in a movie where he doesn't talk. Or show his face. Like they showed his face like one time or a couple of times. Yeah, at the beginning, but then the whole rest of the movie, he was kind of uh But headless. why would you have him and not let him speak? It's like having Morgan Freeman and not No, because he's got that voice. I mean, he's like... Yeah. It's what he's known for. I don't even think he's an actor anymore. He just acts like himself. He acts the same way every movie. And it's great. I love it. I love watching him act in his movies, but... You ever met him? No, not him. I bet that's a weird dude. Yeah. I think he's got some shit going on. <laughs> I don't know. He just looks like he'd be weird. What do you think he's got going on? What about that Fat Boy Slim video that he's in? What, just dancing like it? Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> that made me like him more than anything. And, uh, I don't know, that movie, uh, well, he was in Pulp Fiction. That was funny. Oh, he's, man, he's, his list of movies is a <sighs> fucking mile long. Man on Fire was another one of my favorites. He cuts a pretty good promo in there. That's is that that Denzel just, Washington movie? Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Which, that's what The Punisher should have been. For comic book fans, I just went on a tangent. But if you watch Man on Fire with Denzel, Christopher Walken, that's The Punisher. Yeah, that Punisher movie was kind of lame, wasn't it? Yeah, just out there trying to make friends and shit. Punisher don't have no friends. He ain't got no friends. He don't need no buddies, no pals. He just needs micro. The guy that gives him the weapons and he goes out and punishes his motherfuckers. What do you do when the Hulk was screwing around with him? Oh, in that book, there was a... <laughs> It was called The Punisher Kills the Marvel Universe. And he just waited till he turned into David Banner and went over there and shot him in the back of the head. Or some shit in front of the head. Didn't, he, the didn't head. he just throw some kind of tracking device on him and follow him around until yeah. he changed and then Made shoot him? Made it look incredibly easy. 
I remember. Why would, he, why would everybody just do that? He was fighting Spider Man that time, and Spider Man was out there doing all the shit with the spider sense. And Wicker said, "So Spider Man is not faster than the speeding bullet." Not that one, apparently. I want to see Superman. Have you seen the previews for that? Yeah. Oh no, that's good. I did see uh, what's today? Today's Tuesday, uh, Sunday night. I saw Iron Man three finally. I oh, wanted yeah? to, I wanted to catch it before it wasn't playing in three D anymore. Well, I guess we can talk about it now. Now, if you ain't seen Iron Man three by now, we're going to talk about it. So, a couple weeks in, you can't accuse us of dropping spoilers. Okay. What you think about the Mandarin? Uh, they took some liberties with that character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's one way I, of, of saying it. I, I didn't like. I didn't like. It. I think they wasted a good character doing that. It was interesting that they kept it a secret. That they kept what they did to the character a secret because nobody knew that going in. Like I, I definitely didn't know that was going to happen to him. You just thought it was going to be the Mandarin as a heel. Yeah, I was like, I was disappointed, and I've talked about this before. I hate, and I generally hate when uh, they change the sex, or race, or you know, the yeah. background of a character. Like making the kingpin a black guy. You know, and I mean, Michael Clark Duncan didn't do a bad job in that. But you could have like, had Hugh Dan Wright out there, and that shit would have been Dan perfect. Wright in that, you know, but like when you read a book and you got these characters and you've been reading them for years and you know what they look like in your mind or in your mind's eye, especially, it's even, it's almost worse in novels because in novels you create the image yourself. And then it's something totally, you know, kind of fucks you up a little bit. So, like, when I was like, Ben Kingsley, and Ben actually has some kind of Asian ethnic background to a degree. But when I think Asian warlord, Ben Kingsley is not the first guy that pops in my mind. Ken Watanabe, maybe. Yeah. I, I would rather have fucking Jackie Chan. That's like when they had uh, John Wayne play Genghis Khan. Yeah. Because they wouldn't let a Chinaman in a movie back then. Like Paul Mooney said with uh, Tom Cruise as The Last Samurai. Didn't we talk about this last Yeah, week? I think we did. The Last that. Samurai was actually a good movie, though. Yeah, that's fine. But I, I didn't like that. And <laughs> you should dismiss that. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Fuck that movie. Who was that guy that was there in that one? Ken Watanabe. That was him? The Yeah, the main uh, samurai guy was. Is that the guy that was in, uh, he was in one of the Batmans too, and maybe he was in uh, that damn uh, Conception movie? That, uh, Inse- uh, Inception? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Not Conception. <laughs> what was it? The one with the the dream within a dream? Yeah. Well, I don't remember. It, was, it ended in Eption. I so don't maybe the porn version of it is Conception. He was, uh, yeah, he was that main. Uh, you think you fucking... But you're not really fucking. It's a fuck with a fuck. you're in a dream. But in a dream, you are fucking. I've done that before. I wish I could do it every night. But, um. Anyway, I mean, it was good, though. I like. Yeah, it was good. I love, I, love Rob, I love the casting of Robert Downey Jr. I thought he was a perfect Tony Stark. I think he's just Robert Downey Jr. in his movies, though. I think that's just him. Could be. I mean, if you watch him in interviews, man, he knows it. Well, I some mean, of the casting, like, I thought Tobey Maguire was a good Spider Man. Yeah, and there's a lot of people on the fence about that. A lot of people didn't like him. But if you, if people that really read or, or knew the Spider-Man character, he's not supposed to be. He's supposed to be like a, a kid. Yeah. And he's supposed to be kind of goofy. He's not supposed to be, you know, some badass. Did or you something. like the new one, the new kid? No. He actually uh, wasn't bad. It kind of went for the ultimate universe Spider-Man on him. Um, I like Toby better. I hated the lizard as the main. As the main hill, though, I think the lizard's a fucking jobber. Yeah, and they made him way more powerful in that movie than I ever envisioned him being. Yeah, I don't mind a lizard being a lackey, like a, you know, somebody... Somebody manipulating him or yeah, something because like he's that. stupid. Yeah. I thought the best casting of all was damn Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. He was a great... You know what I, you know I knew they could do a Dr. Octopus movie? Uh, in The Matrix. Uh-huh. If you saw The Matrix, they had the... When it, uh, Ever, Nebuchadnezzar ship was out there and them fucking... Sentinels would come. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I thought about. I said, man, they could do a Dr. Octopus the movie. Yeah, the tentacles. I said, they could do a Dr. Octopus movie. That's how my mind works. Um, you want to hear a funny story real quick? I know I'm all over the place today, but i got a lot going on. Watching The Matrix. I'd seen it once, and then on the road, me, Jeff, and Shannon went and saw it. Now, well, I forget where we were, you know, Ohio or something. Have you noticed Ohio is my go-to place when I say I'm on the road? That's because it's centrally located? Right in the middle. Okay. And uh, we went and saw The Matrix. And I just knew that Shannon didn't know what the fuck was going on. Like something just in my bones told me. What was he doing Shannon over there? This no clue. What, because that movie, if you ain't pay attention, can yeah. get you. That Inception movie was like that. Inception I had to watch that way four or five times before I figured out what was going on. You could pay attention in that one to know what, know what was going on. But I, we got in the car and I asked Shannon. I said, "What do you think about that movie?" And he goes, "Well, I liked it, but 
When he went from one planet to the next, where'd the spaceship come from? <laughs> I about I turned into a piss pounder myself. Does he believe in dinosaurs? <laughs> By the way, Broderick G. McQueen, who is a fan, well, he supports big oil, but he doesn't believe that dinosaurs ever existed. Broderick, I know you're listening. I need you to look up what a fossil fuel is to see where fossil fuels come from. Since you support big oil, just do that. Write a short little essay and get back with me. And focus on the word fossil. Yeah, that's the key word there. Not fucking fossil watch, which this is not, but... But a fossil. That was an entertaining episode last week. He's a character, that's for sure. He's something. He's something. Broderick G. Period. McQueen. Whose ancestors were the slaves of Steve McQueen of Queen. Right. Evidently. Because we all had... All, all us white honkies yeah. had plantations he and slaves. all us honkies were rich, loaded, and we all had plantations back in the day. Anyway. What, what's his, uh, he's not on Twitter, he's on damn MySpace or... He's on, yeah, he's on a MySpace. Photo Bucket or something, what's his account on? Instagram, best thing since sweet iced tea. Yeah, like that's not hard to remember. Yeah, why don't you make a longer name? Okay. But anyway, also this weekend we had, um, you didn't get to see the UFC, did you see any highlights? Uh, they was still on. We went to eat at Hooters after the show, and it was still playing. And uh, all I noticed was the whole damn canvas was covered in blood. Fucking blood. So I think somebody might have been putting what? some damn bones to a face. What, Tommy Rich and damn Abdullah the Butcher? Them motherfuckers began knocked out. Bigfoot Silva anyway lost. Cain Velasquez is just... He is a damn monster. Now what's his record now? Has he lost? He lost uh, to Junior Dos Santos. He got kind of clipped behind the ear. And, um, and they kind of just knocked him goofy. And now that, that was his only loss. And Did they stop it or did he, he yeah, couldn't they get stopped. up? Well, I mean, he was, he was done because uh, Dos Santos jumped on him and knocked his ass out. There ain't but, no stand and eight count or anything in that shit, yeah. is there? And then uh, they had a rematch and Kane beat the fuck out of him for 25 straight minutes. Do you think that's safe? What? I mean, just I'm used to watching boxing. You know, when somebody gets fucked up, unless you're Tommy Morrison, uh-huh. the ref will stop it. Right. And not just let somebody sit there and pound you in the head while you're unconscious. Who did that to Tommy Morrison again? Ray Mercer. Ray fucking merciless Ray Mercer. And that was merciless. I mean, Tommy Tommy Morrison was hooked on the ropes. He was out. He beat the shit and out. And that, that head was just going, ta-dee, ta-dee. I remember that. <laughs> and, I was, and Richard Steele was the ref, and I'm like, what are you fucking doing? That's when doing? Tommy Morrison was like the white Mike Tyson, too. He was, he was. I ain't seen him since. I think that beating made him quit. It beat the AIDS into him. But then uh, I just see these UFC guys and they'll get hit. You can tell when they're out and they go down and they just let the guy jump on them and hit them three or four more times. And I'm like, damn, you're going to kill somebody if you ain't careful. Well, I mean, I think even if they get stood up, they're going to get hit three or four more times anyway. So I'd rather get, I mean, honestly, I'd rather get knocked out quick than go 12 rounds and have my damn head punched apart 87 fucking times with one jab by the Van Holyfield. <laughs> Bobby you Chiz. Know, you know, I don't know. You know what was in his eye that night? They said that <laughs> boxing gloves. Yeah. He said, I don't know. Here, let me, let me get that out of there for you. Getting choked out, like, people think that's dangerous. That's actually not as bad as people think. You nah, know, you, you just, just pass out. Yeah, you just pass out. For, I mean, I'm sure it's not healthy. If I had to say it, it's completely healthy. Yeah, but it's I like in school that. when you do that thing where you hold your ankles and take deep breaths and stand up and then fall. I mean, and that's not dangerous held, until you crack your head on the floor or something. When you held your ankles, was the gym teacher behind you? Oh, yeah. Was it Jake Manscott? No. Manscaped. Manscaped. Man, that dude was funny, man. I liked him. He's good. Did you, he, did you see him out there drinking out of his little canteen? Uh, I was back there, man. I had... He's got a he's got a can like a, a canteen uh-huh. that hangs around your shoulder. And he'll put it over there and he'll take a little powder out of the ring and and then he'll open up the <laughs> the Cub Scout manual and read it and then he'll get back in there. That way. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's good, man. I've uh, I've seen him a couple times. He's good. Caleb Conley's Caleb Conley's good. fucking great. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. And uh, uh-huh. I'm a big fan of uh, Adam Page. I don't know how many people, you know, I don't know how his name is Adam out Page there. Adam Page is a young up and coming. He's got a really good look. He keeps himself in good shape. He's uh he's a good wrestler. Now every time I just want to throw this out there. Every single time he's very you pretty. mention Adam Page, you go, he's got a good look. Real good look. Now you sold me on him. I was like, okay, okay, we you know, let's book the guy. I want him but but the point I want to make is how good looking he is. You are, are you in love? I, I, I wouldn't go Stay that away from him. I mean, I barely come on. I bar- come on. I barely know the guy. <laughs> uh, Mickey Gambino did good. I had I had 
hopes for him, and he he delivered. What happened, man? We're talking about UFC. What happened on the damn? We, we transitioned. Back you already talked about ten things on there that I know nothing about. Come on, man, get back, man. You got to get into this with me, man. This is supposed to be about all kinds of shit. We did cover Iron Man, though, so you actually did good this week. I, I like you're, Iron Man. You're ahead of the curve so far. And I watched Raw this week, front okay. to back. Let's go with Raw. See, so. Also, wait a minute. What was the other heavyweight fight? Oh, Junior Dos Santos, who is the former UFC heavyweight champion. Okay. Spinning heel kicked Mark Hunt. Cooked. Spinning heel What the fuck? He cooked that motherfucker. Spinning heel kicked Mark Hunt. Right to fucking sleep. Mark or Mike? Mark. Mark. Out. Mark out? Mark Hunt was on the damn You mark out for Mark Hunt. Sometimes I mark out for Mike Hunt. Um, anyway, that was what... Uh, and TJ Grant uh, shocked, shocked the world with his little upset. I shook up the world. And uh, they were going to... Um, Mike Tyson kind of was instrumental in him getting knocked out of the night. The, uh, oh, was Tyson there? Yeah, Tyson was there. And um, they do these bonuses on the UFCs so where you get fight of the night bonus, submission of the night, knockout of the night. And a lot of people thought Junior Dos Santos should have got it for knocking out Mark Hunt. But... Um, uh, T.J. Grant knocked out a uh, Gray Maynard, and uh, Tyson gave him the endorsement. So, how much money do you way. think Mike Tyson earned throughout his boxing career? I heard one time that he blew like two thirty million dollar fortunes. So he had a thirty million dollar fortune, blew it, and then got another one and blew that. Yeah. You know who I bet still has his fortune? Who Don King? Yeah. Robin, and all of his brain cells. Robin Williams. I mean, Robin Williams. What was his name? Robin Gibbons. Gibbons. Gibbons or Gibbons? Gibbons. Now, Tyson was Gibbons her his damn money? That's right. He apparently yeah. beat her ass, too. Was he giving her an ass for Oh, yeah. I don't know, man, if I was... Uh, I don't know why I would marry Mike Tyson <laughs> if I was a chick. It's kind of like these people that go out and buy pit bulls and then get upset when they get bit. Yeah, it's not, it's not the dog, it's the owner. So they all say... You ever seen anybody mauled to death by a fucking kitten? No. And that motherfucker's got teeth, don't he? You ever seen a little fucking chihuahua as a guard dog? You know why that chihuahua doesn't kill people? Because he can't. Yeah, kick that motherfucker's head off. I had a little Maltese. You remember that little white dog I had? Yeah. Can't stand that fucking thing. If he was... You still got it? Is it no, he finally dead? died. I think he was 30. If he was that big, he would have killed 10 people by now. Yeah. I mean... He had every intention of doing it. <laughs> yeah. He just didn't have the tools. So what the hell were we talking about? Oh, Raw. Did you like Raw? I think Raw had highs and lows. And the highs were pretty high and the lows were pretty low. You have uh, emphasized on me to try not to be so negative, so... I think you're drawn to the negative. Uh... I think... Because I, it took you a while to warm up to D. Bryan. And I was telling you, that motherfucker's over. Well, I mean, I... You know, with him, I mean, the fact that I was friends with him 12 years ago when he first started out kind of gives you a little bit of bias. I mean, you like him and you're proud of what he's doing, but then sitting back and going, now, wait a minute, is he a, you know, iconic person like Hogan, Rock, Austin, that kind of thing? Right. I would still have to say probably not. I mm -hmm. mean, that doesn't mean he's not good, though. I mean, if he had Sid Vicious's body, you know, he'd probably be the biggest wrestler that's ever been on the planet. Uh... I think I've got a little bit of personal animosity towards the WWE product. Mm -hmm. And it's not, just so everybody knows, it's not sour grapes because I don't work there anymore. I mean, that had, that, that wasn't their fault. I'm not going to get into sour raisins? No, it's just, I don't really, I feel like their stranglehold on the business is keeping anybody else from being successful. Gotcha. We could debate that, but, I mean, it's not necessarily like it was 10 or 15, 20 years ago when they were deliberately trying to put everybody out of business, even if that's what they did. Or if everybody else put themselves out of business trying to keep up with them. Right. So, but, uh, you know, I just like, I, I, love, I love wrestling. I don't love the WWE. I love wrestling, and I would like to see wrestling get away from the comedy shows and the just the, some of the silly stuff they do and get back. I mean, there's guys out there. So your favorite part of the show was probably Kylie singing Happy Birthday. See, that kind of shit makes me want to throw up in my own pockets. <laughs> in your pocket? Wherever. I mean, it's just, you know, I sit there, you know, Randy Orton and Sheamus go out there and wrestle. Who'd they have? They had a tag match against Cody Rhodes and, and, Sandow. and Sandow. And, you know, those guys put that effort into it and then you get some, some shit like that out there. And it's just, I mean, do you think that stuff's even... 
if no, I, I think comedy is good if it's done right. If and it's if funny it's and not just funny. stupid. Yeah, that was just stupid. See, you you do that shit with four guys that weigh two thousand pounds between the four of them that you could do other stuff with, and no, then what was the match? It was a. Uh, it was, was that the three MB and it was Tenzai per, match? Yeah. When was that the match? What was the it match? was no Brodus Clay and Tenzai against three man band. So why was uh, Kali and him out there? Well, I guess he was the third one. Oh, he teamed was, with. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. gotcha. And uh, I think I deleted it. See, I don't have a problem with guys like the three man band doing comedy. See, and I do. Why? Because they're supposed to be heels. Yeah, but. I'm just saying, and, I, and that, that'd be like them smashing that cake in Hornswoggle's face. Yeah, that was funny. That did not make me, it, it, exactly. It was funny. Right. It's they and should it be did baby not faces. Make you hate the heel. It made you like them. You know who my most recent favorite uh, comedy gimmick was, and they never did anything with it. They just kind of phased it out, and you hadn't seen him since. Nope. Kung Fu Naki. Kung Fu Naki was awesome. That shit was gold, wasn't it? Yeah. Of course it was gold. Why did they? Why did they? Up with it. Why did they shit on it? Uh, I just don't. You know what I wanted to do with it? My my grand design, and I don't know if I've ever told this on the show, so this might be. Steamboat was, a, you know, of course, a backstage agent and uh-huh. producer on the show. Is he still? Uh, yeah, I think so. He's he's involved in the company at some point. I think he was training down in Tampa. Uh, or was that Orlando? Now is where NXT is. And I think he stopped doing one or the other. He stopped either being a producer or he stopped being a trainer to focus on one or the other. But his son, his son is uh, still down in the right. um, But anyway, the, the the end game for Kung Fu Naki was, a, you know, I wanted to do some segments with him where he was training with Steamboat. And Steamboat would teach him all the ways of the dragon. And Funaki would constantly be fucking him up. <laughs> you know, Steamboat would break the boards with his hand and Funaki would go do it and it wouldn't work. You know, Steamboat would break, you know, bricks with his head. Funaki would knock himself out. You know, shit like that. It was going to be like the Karate Kid, but a little bit more comical. Finally, in one of the matches, it finally works. You know, and he gets Steamboat's approval and that sort of thing. I mean, I think that would have been it would have been some funny stuff to do. You know, I mean, it's not a main. Yeah, I mean, you've anyway. always had comic relief on on shows. Like, I thought, I don't know. I but finally, anyway, man, Steamboat finally would let him graduate, and he would go on to be, you know, Kung Fu Naki. You know, to have a way to have Steamboat on the show. I was like, it was a win win all the way around. So why do you think they didn't follow through with it? It wasn't their idea. Of course. I'm surprised he even did Kung Fu Night. It, it took him years to do that. I came up with that angle. Why are people like Four that? years ago. I don't know. I mean, people will definitely shit on a good idea just because they won't get the credit for it. Yeah. And they will push a bad idea just because it's theirs. Shove it down everybody's throat when they know it ain't working. Right. Um, like, I thought Jimmy Valiant was a good mid-card comic relief Mm-hmm. The thing about the the, the detriment to the, the guy that's doing it is it's kind of hard to m- move up past the mid card when you do stuff like that, but it can be done, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The thing is, like, I mean, I, I definitely there were times when I was, you know, with the top guys, and times when I was stuck in mid card hell there. So I, I definitely can see both sides of that fucking coin. But I think it's an important role, and but it has to be funny. The, the, the main point is jokes have to be funny. If nobody laughs, it's not a fucking joke, it's just a statement. When uh, Murray and I were working, you know, if the writers would ever come to me and ask me, you know, well, if I had any ideas, everything I would ever pitch would be a comedy idea. But I couldn't really think of anything else to do with Murray and myself. Murray is comedy, period. Just looking at it. He is comedy. Incarnate. There you go. But uh, then they would always shit on it and go, no, no, you guys are too big, you know, we need to do something serious with you. And now they got 400-pound guys out there singing happy, happy birthday and dancing like idiots. Did you see the, uh, your, your guys' gimmicks almost came back, though. Did you see the, uh, it's Husky Harris, whatever his name is. The uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb vignette. I don't remember that. Oh, you didn't see that? I, I must have overlooked it somehow. Oh, man. That's, well, I was watching. Yeah, introducing, which I'm glad because they quit doing that for a long time. And he's time. M- Rotundo's kid. Yeah, yeah. And is it Wade Wayne Bryan or some shit? I forget this. I forget this. Well, they kind of tried to do it with uh, Jesse and Festus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit. But this one looks super creepy. This is like Deliverance type creepy shit. So. I have to go back. I was watching. You told me to watch Raw, so I, I started watching it last night, and then I fell asleep, and I had it recording. So I got up and tried to. 
It's actually good for the. Then I got up this morning and watched the rest of it. I must have skipped that part in the middle or something. It must have been towards the middle of the show. You know, if you were fast forwarding it, you probably didn't notice it was a part of the show. You probably thought it was, thought a, it was commercial. a commercial. Yeah, I might have been. That damn tag match. The ending was a little. It was a little uh, off kilter, but that tag match with Brian and Kane against the Shield was fucking good. Now the Shield, I like the Shield. The Shield's good, man, and that crowd is behind every damn thing Daniel Bryan does, boy. I, he's getting himself over, that's for sure. He's over as hell. He might have the best reaction match-wise, like from start to finish, of anybody that's on the roster. And that's more than the iconic guys. They are fucking... Them people, are go, they go bananas. Well, he's He's got those catchphrases that people chant and things like that. It's ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. You know, that's what you want in a match, people to be electric. Like, I tweeted, I was like, I hate to have to follow this one. Well, whoever's following this better have the A-game on. And I, I don't know, I can't even remember what the fuck they followed it with. The colleague thing was really stupid, though. Then they had a the girls' match, and uh, uh, Natty Nighthawk gets beat in a hometown on her birthday. Like, trying to screw with her now? No, nah, they're, man, they're, they're, they're notorious for beating somebody in a hometown. What, just see if you'll complain about it? No, nah, it's just what they like to do. I mean, only like a, a, some of the top guys get to go over to their hometown, but anybody else normally gets abused. It's like kind of the, the cheap hometown heat sort of thing, but it is what it is. So the mighty WWE is now resorting to cheap pops and cheap heat. Oh, man, they've always done them, man. Listen, man, a cheap pop done properly still a pop. It is what it is. Like the big loud chop? The big loud chop. Woo! All that shit. What was a, um, Ambrose's match with Kofi was good. Do you remember talk, hit, hit, the thing with his finish where he does that headlock driver into a DDT? Do you remember I used to try to do that from a snapmare? I would try to snapmare the guys down. But half the time he kept laying on my fucking shoulder and breaking my shit. And I quit doing it. I gave up on it. What is it about it? Why? It's obvious that out of those three guys, I mean, they're all they're all good. But Ambrose is obviously standing out. Just different. What do you, just that he's not your typical and he's got that kind of... He just looks different, like, from anybody in general. Well, he's kind of got that Matthew McConaughey type I presence still, about him. I still think more Percy Whitmore. Yeah, something like that. At the end, I can't tell if it was slobber or something. He looked like he had some damn herpes on his lips or some shit, though. I don't know, but all I can remember about him was, nope. Nope. <laughs> hey, is that herpes? Nope. nope. Man, he's a damn good, uh, he's got a good presence. So what, how do you think the mother, How do you think all three of them will fare in the long run? Do you think he will be the one with the most longevity? If you had to guess at this point, it's actually just kind of sucks that that's what a lot of people focus on. Like now, like well, as soon as you get a tag team, which one's gonna make it? Yeah, like, which one's gonna be in the homeless shelter? People bitch about the tag team division, and the second they get a good tag team, people let's, let's start break them up. To break them up. Like actually, right now, I mean, they could actually if they did a, a show like like you know, one of the things I think they could do with Raw sometimes, and this is I know a crazy idea. Like, what if they did, like, a, a retro raw where everybody was dressed in all the shit like they did 10 years ago? Something like that. Just have different themes sometimes. Just to kind of, you know, throw a monkey into the... Into the, uh, into the wrench. Not a monkey wrench. Throw the whole fucking monkey. A whole damn but, um, monkey. A monkey flip without a flip. <coughs> fucking monkey. What the fuck was I just talking about? Throwing a monkey wrench in the flip. Yeah, but what I was going... You were going with a retro raw. Who are we talking about? Oh, oh, you're yeah, doing a tag team tournament. Like, have a show that was a tag team tournament. And with right like now, nostalgic tag teams? Yeah. Yeah. But, I would like that. I, mean, I would watch you, that. You could bring in some older tag teams too. I would but watch. Right now you got you got the champs, you got Shield, you got Kane and D Bryan, you got the Usos, you got Titus and Young. My, you might, you who, might could get the serial thrillers horses. in there. That'd be a good name for them. The Dark Horses. That is a good you name. Play Write that down. Uh, the Dark Horses. Um You know, you got Randy and Seamus, if I didn't already say them. You know, you got a couple other guys in there, team quite a bit, you know. Now, would you put Team Hell No in there, or would you put Hell Kane yeah. and Taker together? No, Team Hell No. Taker's, is he about done or not? Uh, I, I don't know. I know he just, I think he just had another surgery or something, though. Well, I mean, no, that might have been Booker T I'm thinking about. Man, everybody's having surgeries. I'm fucked up. I need some surgery or something. I want surgery. I've never had surgery in my life. Never? Never. I've had... I've had to have my fucking face repaired three times, and it's still fucked up. My neck, my arm. 
other arm. I've had all kinds. I had a damn, I had my first one when I was damn eight years old. Never had a surgery. Broke both my arms. And that was really the worst, and tore my PCL. That was the only, and I never had that repaired. Don't you think that tag team tournament would be good? Yeah, that'd be interesting as fuck. I love tournaments. Yeah, I love looking at the brackets and. Remember when the Jim Crockett Memorial Tag Team? I used to love it. I went to two of them. That shit was awesome. I love it. Wouldn't it be cool if they just did that? Speaking of Jim Crockett, I just read where one of the Mod Squad guys died. Remember them? I remember them. I didn't know he died though. Yeah, he he died. I don't know. Recently or? Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago or something. Remember Jim and Mac Jeffers? I remember the pictures of the Mod Squad. I'm, I'm watching, uh, they were two uh, jobbers, and I guess they put two brothers and they put a gimmick on them. They were jobbers in the NWA, but in Central States wrestling, they were top team. But they, uh, I was watching a shoot interview with Dusty. Was that, have you ever seen that, that guest booker thing they do? Yeah. No. It's a thing, and he had his book, which I guess he has this little red book that he actually used to book in. And this was back in the when booking was, you know, pad and paper, and he was talking about he was reading through there and going over some of the cards he booked. And this was back in the the Jim Crockett heydays. And he was going through the card and he was like, M and J J, or something the Mod Squad. And he was like, I can't remember who that was. And I was going, I know, I know, it's Jim and Mac Jeffers. And I was like wanting to call in, and I was like, this video was probably made eight years ago. You wouldn't win a damn prize. Yeah, I was like, damn. Man, I'll knock my damn head Easy off. boy. CW kicked that bitch out that window right there. All in this area right here. Like, if I didn't have this fucking chin strap beard, it was, I bet it's one big bruise. If I can, it's tender as shit. How about my match with Haku and uh, Andre? What did yeah, I get? Haku kicked the shit out of you. Yeah. You know where? In the fucking teeth. Yeah. And you ain't going nowhere with damn Andre's big ass chest right behind your head. You're sitting there trying to do this shit. Fuck. I seen Haku get in a fight one time. Shit didn't last too long. Did he put the yoke on him? Yeah, he fucking grabbed him in the damn... His <laughs> what, fish. right here? He was choking the fucking piss out of him. What'd that guy do? Gurgle? I fucking went down in the damn heat. I had to go pull his big ass off of him. Do you remember that night? I think it was in Richmond where... Hold on, hold on let me rephrase that. I went over there and politely asked him to let him go. I went over there and said, because I would always call him mean, because that's how we became friends at WCW. So I went over there and said, mean. So let's go. He's got a reputation, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, I, I, he's I always been really that. nice to me, but I've heard he's probably not one of them guys you'd want to screw around with. You know, and did he make a believer out of you that night? Hell yeah. <laughs> I was in awe. I couldn't believe that this little motherfucker was going to try to fight him anyway. And I was just watching him, boy. My eyes were like damn headlights. I'm like, oh, I'm about to see some cool shit. Do you remember that night uh, when WCW and WWF at the time were both in Richmond running two different towns and the DX guys went over to the yeah, building? Yeah. I was there. At the WWF? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think I was I think that was when I was working there. Yeah, it would have been. It's either that or I was booked like for the night or whatever, but I was I was backstage. And uh they had gone and done that and then when they were coming back or whatever, uh primetime Brian Lee, the ribber that he is Goes running down the hall backstage, going, "Oh shit, Ming's here! Ming's here! Oh shit!" You should have seen that damn hallway clear out. Yeah, yeah, starting with me. You know, I've always said, well, not always, but uh, in retrospect, last couple of years, I was like, you know how much that would have changed the, the the future of the business if when DX came out and did that, if that WCW locker room would have went out there and whooped their fucking ass. Or ran them off and filmed it, saw them running scared, or went out there and just whooped their ass. Like, Eric, if Eric went and said, look, me, I'll bail you out. Go out there and beat these motherfuckers to death. If I was him, I would have done it. It would have killed every single bit of momentum that WWE That would have killed their business. That could have ruined them. Weren't they kind of on the edge of disaster at that point anyway? Not disaster, but they weren't, you know. They were in, in rough shape yeah, for a while. Yeah, they were in rough shape compared to how good WCW was doing. Man, they were, and WCW had the clientele to go out there and handle those fucking guys. Well, there was only four of them. Yeah. I mean, you send the whole locker room out there if you have to. Yeah. That's so, a man, shit. Now, how great would that have been, though? I don't know if it would have been great for the industry because fucking, you know, WWF might have been done. But might have, and then there wouldn't be shit. I don't know why shit. they wouldn't have done why, why they didn't. I would love to have been backstage there and heard what the reaction there was. I mean, they, it, I guess there's a chance they might not have known they were out there until they were gone. I've always heard that they knew and that Eric didn't want them, nobody to do nothing. Like what, just kind of no-sell it? Yeah. Yeah, that probably wouldn't have been 
the best way to handle that. Man, I'm serious, man. If they would have went out there, I mean, if you'd have had Goldberg, Goldberg Ming, and Ming, you know, Nash wouldn't have done shit because they was his buddies. But you know, Steiner and Scotty wouldn't have went out there and might have done some shit. Both the Steiners, uh, shit. Who else would they had? Sent Tank Abbott out there. If, if they saw them motherfuckers come out, they'd have ran. I, I would have loaded that fucking tank up with some real shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to shoot at him. I would have shot me first right with that fucking thing. He would have probably caught the damn shell and ate it. Threw it back. That could have changed the damn industry though. In another, in a, in a, in an alternate universe, that happened. We should write a comic book with the Watcher. And, and yeah, what if, what if Mean would have fucking ate DX? And then he was back there working for the WWE again a couple of years after that. Hell, everybody was. Yeah, as the Hardcore Champion. That's what uh-huh. happened to. The, that was the death of the WCW Hardcore title, I think. Die. The final days of WCW. Yeah, I'm on that DVD. To damn, I remember. Yeah, I saw you. I didn't have nothing. They want you to bury somebody, and you wouldn't do it. Yeah, well, I did. Not that I wouldn't. I just I wasn't going to be jump on a bandwagon or burying it. Uh, you know, these guys. If I didn't have nothing personal to really say about them, I mean, shit. You know, Bischoff hired me. Russo put me on TV. You know, they gave me my big break. WCW did. So I wasn't going to go true. and just bury them just to make this fucking DVD. You know, shit. I've been on other DVDs, but they were. They were trying to goad me. And you know, well, don't you have any this to say? And that's the same. No, I'm not sure. I had a great what do you time. What do you think in general? With as much money was behind that company, caused it to fail. Do you think it was because Ted Turner didn't put a more personal interest into it? Yeah, mismanagement of the money. Just letting yeah. the inmates run the asylum. Inmates run the asylum. When AOL bought it, man. When it becomes all about dollar, and nobody gives a fuck what you're actually doing. When it's all about dollar, and nobody has any sense. Yeah, right. And then so. Well, Turner didn't have any choice at that point. He had to do it, didn't he? Or that, that would have screwed up his deal. I guess. Or he was just ready to say, fuck it. Ted Turner, if you're listening and you still love wrestling, I got a product for you. Omega. Omega. Well, his non-competes probably up by now. Yeah, your non-competes up. You know you ain't got shit to do. Jim Crockett, if you got any money left, we'd love to have you. Oh, actually, we'd just love to have it. Yeah. Uh, you don't even have to come. Just send the money. Any other Warren Buffett, if you're listening, uh, Donald Trump, anybody, any financiers that are available, yeah. Omega. You need to start a Kickstarter. We will put our product up against anybody. It's, damn sure is, man. That damn show. That's the one thing I've heard nonstop. It's like, man, you know, normally I go to shows, a couple bad matches, or there's laws. It's like, man, y'all shit was nonstop. But it's like, man, yeah, it's easy. I think that's the easy part, you know. Uh, I guess me, you, and a couple other guys are considered, and I'm slowly going to drift back down to the just talent part of the uh, of the company. But I think it's easy to put on a good show with talented guys. I mean, fuck it. I mean, just so, that's always been my thing in WWE. Remember, fuck a youth movement. Get a talent movement. And something that's always bo- boggled my mind about. I mean, I go to. I haven't been going to indie shows in a while, but since we started doing our thing, I try to go around to indie shows. Sort of to scout talent, but it's mainly to advertise our stuff. Right. I'm trying to advertise to a captive audience that I know will watch wrestling. And I watch the shows, and I'm not going to name anybody or pick on anybody, but I don't understand why you book, some of these guys book the guys they book. Just cheap. They book cheap guys. But, you know, you're going to get a Good cheap people buy. will work cheap. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to stooge out the paydays on here, but... It's worth an extra little bit of money to get somebody that's good. You know, I don't I don't know. I guarantee you, some of those guys on that Omega show got paid more than they ever got paid. Well, I'm sure they did. And this was, you know, our deal with the school was we wanted to raise money for the school, but we had a talent budget that we had to cover. I was the only one that worked free because it was my school, and I said I would do that, and I did. Uh, and so, you know, whatever. But... Even when I did the older mega shows and the few that I booked back in the day, I, I just wanted to make sure guys got paid good because all these promoters that I would work for years and years, man, they would just get such a, a massive, you know, big piece of the pie. And they should get, a, a, you know, the majority of the pie, no doubt, because that's the hard part. For me, as somebody who's done both, who's promoted shows, who's booked, well, all three, who's promoted shows, booked shows, and wrestled, for me, the wrestling is the easiest part because I am naturally have an affinity for that. And that's what I can do, and that's what I'm best at. And it's plus, it's fun. And it's fun. Yeah. And you're not I mean, fucking getting your teeth super kicked apart. But 
the promoting is the hard part, man. Beating the streets. That shit is hard. Talking to people, getting sponsorships, having to advertise, you know. I love talking about wrestling, man, but I did so many interviews for this fucking show. By the time I did the last interview, I'd be like, man, just come or don't come. I don't give a fuck. Well, the the thing about it is it's the state of the whole industry right now. You can't just put it out there and everybody will show up. I mean, you've got to... You've got to generate some some interest in this yourself, and you got, got a lot of good buzz now. Well, I, I'm hoping that buzz. our job will get easier once we get more established. Yeah. But you know, when you're going into a town and people in that town don't know about your product, you know they've already had 45 other indie promoters come through there and put their bullshit on. That's the thing. I want to challenge these other indie promotions out there right now. I'm not challenging you to a contest. I want you to challenge yourself. If your product is bad. I want you to realize that there are probably wrestling fans that came to your show and that might have went to other shows had your show not been so bad. So if you're putting out a shitty product, realize that you're actually hurting the business. And I'm not talking about guys trying, you know, there's always going to be, uh, I wasn't always good. I mean, you know, fucking, you're gonna, there's going to be up and coming talent that's not always going to be top level talent. Guys that are grooming. I ain't talking about that, but if you put on a shitty show, you don't promote, your ring looks like shit, your sound system you is shit. You pick some shithole building. You... Shithole building where there's no bathroom, there's no heat, there's all this kind of fucking nonsense. You got this ragtag group of guys that you don't, you're not paying shit because they don't, they're not worth shit. You're hurting the business. So fucking for, just For everybody. Stop. Yeah, for everybody. So just stop that shit. Or, you know, suck it up. And we've done this. Beat the fuck, and we did it. Before I was the hurricane, before I was anybody known, before I was TV, me and Mike did shows and fucking had the exact same results. We beat the streets, we promoted the shit out of it, you know, we busted our ass, got had a good ring, sound system, all that, and we booked good people on it. And that's really all you got to do. You know, I think, the, I mean, I, I really scratch my head sometimes and I think, why, why what, what are these guys doing? I mean, do they... Do they think this shit is good and they're just so delusional that I they think don't... That's, dude, I think you nailed it. I think a lot of them just fucking don't know what's good. I have people send me matches on YouTube. Not that I'm some kind of mentor or a guru to anybody, but you know, people, hey man, take a look at this and there'll be some YouTube match and I'm going... What in the flying fuck is this? I was like, are you fucking serious? Is this? <laughs> I mean, is this a joke? I mean, what, do you really look at this and think, think this, this is, is funny? Good? Think this is a joke? I'm like, fuck, what... Where do I start? Just quit. Don't do this anymore. Find something else. <laughs> I'll tell you what Undertaker's advice was to somebody one time. No, what? Somebody asked Undertaker, did they have any advice for him? He goes, yeah, take two weeks off and quit. <laughs> I mean, quit business. I think a lot of these guys, when I say, why do they book... Name drop. Let me pick that name up. But yeah. I was giving credit. It wasn't drop. But when they book, I think part of the motivation is they're all buddies. And yeah. they're a little crew of backyard guys that aren't good enough to really get out there and get booked on a real high quality show. So the only way they can work is to book themselves. I'm gonna tell you what was a pain in the ass for this one, you know, this particular show. It was my high school, and was, you know, so I was very instrumental in helping organizing the thing. Like uh, there was uh, so many people I wanted on this show, but anybody out there that's listening, if I didn't have you on the show, you know. Don't think it was like because you weren't talented because there was a lot of talented people I could have put on the show. But if I booked all my friends that I have in this business, it would be a fucking 300 matches on the show. Yeah. You know, I got to keep it to a shortage. Well, that's, that's the point, too. There's no shortage. You know, we can't have... A- You're starting to realize this because you didn't think this for a while because you thought there was no talent out there. And I was telling you, yes, there is. Yeah, the, you just I, haven't seen it. I agree. There. I mean, there's enough of Victory. them out there. Victory. There's enough of them out there. Oh, shit. Yeah, I see that. There's enough of them. I had one from that damn... No, there's enough people out there where you don't have to settle for people yeah. to suck. I mean, you can... And they, they don't charge that much. They don't... I mean, it's not like you can't afford them. I mean, you know, some of these guys that are, you know, right off TV or something, yeah, they might be a little expensive, but there's people out there, and even guys that have never been on TV, there's there's guys out there like that that you can find somebody that's in decent shape that can get in the ring and go. And don't look like that's, an idiot. And that's my main pet peeve. Like, if somebody comes to me and they want to be on my show, I immediately look at them physically, and I'm like, you, you, you're not serious about this. Like, if you don't... If you don't get that part down, that's like showing up at school with no books. Yeah. I mean, that's step one. I, I was talking about that a little bit when somebody asked me about trainers. Like, yeah, I, I make them do all this type of stuff. And I was like, man, I say, see, that's what I don't want to do. 
I don't want to go out there and train somebody to do fucking cardio. Do cardio do that on the their gym. own fucking time. That's where the heart comes in. That's where the work comes in. That's why the people don't see. They see that little 15 minutes of, t- of TV time and think it's all glamorous. They don't see the fucking hours in the fucking cardio. That, I mean, so if your ass can't do that on your own, if you can't work hard on the small time, I mean, you just, you just, your heart's in the wrong place. My wrestling coach, when I was in the seventh grade, said something that stuck with me. I, I had, that was my first year wrestling. I finally got in my first match. Went out there and got my ass beat. And the first thing I remember was, you know, it's different than practice. That's a long ass five minutes. Yeah. And you go out there and you, I mean, if you, I mean, I'd had a couple of matches where I got out there with a, like a real fish where I could just beat him mm-hmm. and it really didn't take that much effort. I got out there with this dude and I, we were like real evenly matched and I was, I, I probably could have beat this guy, but I blew up. You know, I got tired and then I kind of quit. And I was like, fuck, I think I could have beat that guy if I was just in a little bit better shape. And, uh. I went back to the coach, I was the coach, we were talking about it at practice, and I said, yeah, I think we ought to do more cardio at practice. He said, motherfucker, you can do that shit at home. We're here to practice. And I went, I guess he's right. No, I mean, I'm not, my coach would make us, he would give us in shape. Now, I mean, if you're a coach and you're coaching a team, that, that's a tiny bit different, you know, when you're kids and stuff like that. But if you want to be a professional, that's when you do that shit on your fucking own time. Mm-hmm. I can make you better. I can sit there and watch you, tell you what you're doing wrong, or, or what I think you're doing wrong, and try to help you fix some stuff. But I ain't, I ain't going to sit there and try to get nobody in shape, man. Go do your own fucking job. I mean, jobs. quality practice time is limited. Yeah. You know, you, I don't need to sit there and watch somebody run suicides in the gym. I had a kid from Athens Drive, and I can't remember his name. And I would beat him every time. But it was the hardest six minutes that I would ever have. It would go six minutes. I couldn't pin him. And that motherfucker would fight me the entire six minutes. And he finally got me my senior year. And I promise you, not promise you, but I'm just, I think I just finally broke. I just said, fuck it, win. God damn it. <laughs> Did you ever feel like saying, look, man, I, I, you know I, I'm going to win. Why don't you just quit making this so hard? Well, see, this was, a, it was like either the regionals or, actually, I think it was, like, fuck, I can't remember what it was. It was some kind of tournament. It was no. It was one of those invitational tournaments where there's no real championship on the line. It's like a, you know, a tournament. An exhibition tournament or whatever. No, it's not an exhibition. It's it's a record. It goes on your record, but it's just like the, how East Way would have the East Way Classic. That wasn't a conference right. or a regional championship. It was just that. Something they sponsored. Yeah. And so I remember I got knocked out of, of the of the main bracket. I'm in the constellations. Now I'm going to the finals, and I look down. And I saw his name. I remember seeing his name going. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, because I had beat him in the first round of the, of the main bracket. Mm-hmm. And I was fucking exhausted from wrestling his ass. Then I go to the next round, and I lose somehow. I don't know, got fucked up by somebody. So now I'm in the constellations. Make it to the final. guys. I should have beat that guy in the main bracket, but for whatever reason, I didn't. Because I was one of the top seeds and just well, I got jobbed out. Um, upset. Upsets are exciting in sports. Did it upset you? Not really. I didn't fucking know. By my senior year, I was already pro wrestling, so even though I did those three years after high school, like my, you knew where my heart was at, you were there. Hey, so you anyway, took my ass up there one time, and I had to wrestle giant Kamala. I just remember looking at that damn bracket and seeing his name, and then I was like, fuck, and we got in that match, and I'm, it, was, it was mainly the credit. He gets all the credit, because if it was me mentally breaking or not, it was because of his ass. Because he I broke did. you? Yeah, I just said, fuck it, man. I just remember being in that match going, fuck it, man. We win. Get me out of here. I'm going home. Who, Fuck that bronze medal. Who were those two heavyweights? I had a bunch of over there. Was it Alexander Karelian and uh, Rulon Gardner that fought and, like, yeah, Rulon like, won one out of 52 matches or something? Yeah, it was so ridiculous. I know one time somebody stepped on the uh, mat with uh, Karelian and had lost to him 18 fucking times in a row. I think it was Rulon Gardner, wasn't it? That, was that many times? He 18, never eighteen he, even right now sounds ridiculous. I might be messing that up. But he finally beat. He finally ended up beating him like yeah, once. Yeah, was on some bullshit too. And I then think. he quit. He yeah, beat him like one to nothing or something like that. Yeah, I think I, I think it was kind of a controversial call too. People need to realize too with amateur wrestling when you get up at the Olympic level and shit, you're not out there watching a damn slam fest. No, the motherfuckers are struggling for that one or two point. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a, a human chess match. Shit, that, that fucking is. final score will be two to one, or yeah. you know, I mean, it's that one take. You you give up a takedown, your That's ass is done. That's fucking sweet science, because there ain't no damn lucky punches in that uh-uh. shit. It's all 
it's it's ninety percent defense and ten percent offense at that level. I mean, you watch two guys in junior high; yeah, they're out there damn throwing each other and all this shit. But you ain't, you ain't gonna get out there and grab Kurt Angle or Sylvester Turkai and go throwing their ass around. Now, fans of uh, that are on my Facebook, you probably saw I posted a clip of when I went and worked out with the East Street Wrestling Team a little bit. Not really worked out; just went and kind of messed around with them. NBC Seventeen was there. And they showed a couple clips of me doing some pretty cool shit. What they didn't show you was this big kid double leg in my ass. <laughs> it was like the, when the first guys that stood up, damn, I weighed me about 20 pounds. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? What'd you say? <laughs> damn, you big, ain't you? Yeah, why well, you gotta give me the big boys? <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for not showing that on the TV. Yeah, plus you gotta, and you can't go in there and damn go all out on one of them kids. Nah, because he grabbed me. I wanted to cross face his ass. I was like, oh, I can't do that. That'd it. be nice on the news camera if he's over there with a broken nose. Yeah. How old are you, son? 17. That's a technique, man. That's a good little program. We got a good little coach over there. Yeah, I was watching him. He, had, he got in there quick with that double leg to be a big old Frankenstein. Well, when you're stronger than somebody, double legs come a lot easier. You just, you just take well, it. You shoot, it's not as much as you shooting in, as much as you just grabbing the leg and pulling, pulling it, into, it into you. A combination of the both. I, 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 shit, I don't think I've ever hit a double leg on somebody in my life. What you got going on this weekend? Uh, the CWF is having a show. CWF. 247.com. That's where you need to go. CWF247.com. One of my favorite independent promotions in the world is right here in North Carolina. In Gibsonville, which Gibsonville. is named after Robert my, Gibson. Robert Gibson. Hoot Gibson, as we call him in this Hoot. Movie. Um, And that's not true at all, what we just said. But the actual show is Saturday night. Yes. June the 2nd, 1st. One of those I don't have all the details about it, but uh, I do know they have a show, and it's at the, mid the uh, CWF Mid Atlantic Sportatorium. Yep. See, and so anyway, go to CWF247.com, and uh, they'll give you all the infos on that. There's a lot of talent from there. And you got to, this is one of, one of the things I've been saying, too, I've, I've been preaching about, is these quality independent wrestling promotions, such as Omega and such as CWF, we need to work together. And those guys are great about working with us. We work with them. This would now this would be show number three fifty one for them, or have they already did a three fifty one? I don't know. They have a they they run shows frequently there. They've got their own place. Uh, they put on quality. They shit. put on a good show. They got a real good setup in that building. <coughs> uh, you know they've got a following, so they can you know they can run the shows without really having to kill themselves advertising it, and the fans follow it. So, so I mean, they, they run in there what three two three times a month. I guess so. I'll be on some more stuff coming up with them. You know what? Just because I, I like their guys, and I want to go in there and test myself with them. Some of these young young bucks. Yeah, they got a great facility there too. There's a, there's a lot of ideas running around in my head about how to utilize that place better. What else you got cooking this week? That's it. Mm, I don't know. I don't like to plan things too far in advance. Myself and uh, Matt Hardy will be teaming up once again in Bluefield, West, West Virginia. Virginia. WV. That's this Saturday night. I uh, don't have any other details on that, but follow me on Twitter at ShaneHelmsCon, which you'll probably do anyway if you're watching this, and I'll get more details. Or follow Matt at Matt Hardy Brand. Now, will you fly to Bluefield or drive? No, it's only about 250 miles. That's a brutal drive, though. Yeah, it's through the yeah. mountains and shit. Yeah. Well, I got that motherfucking Escalade, man. I don't know how to drive up a you, you and Matt going to drive together, or y'all going to go separate? I don't think uh, it's conducive for us to drive together because to, of where he's coming from. Because I got to, you kind of go up to Winston Salem. You would take from here. You would take <coughs> uh, forty to Statesville and catch what is that seventy seven north. Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. Anyway, it's a long ass drive. It's about five and a half hours. I got to sneeze. <coughs> God bless you. <coughs> bless you. Can I get on you? No. Bluefield, West Virginia was one of those towns that uh, George South and the Italian Stallion <coughs> used to run. Why, they didn't pay people? Yes. But the one good thing about that town was, remember Claudio Montrose, the little Super Mario guy? Yeah. That was where Claudio lived, and he had a restaurant, and we all got to go eat at his Italian restaurant for free. Wow, very nice. Well worth the 11-hour round trip. George, if you're listening, you still got a couple shows you never paid me for. If you want to make do, and you'll make up for that, feel free. Not going to ask for it. We'll, we'll put the PayPal address up on the screen. I'm not going to ask for it, but the only time I've never been paid in the business was by the Italian staying in George South. But I do like I do like George, though. I do like him as a person. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. I didn't for a while after that, after getting stiffed on the fucking payday, but I don't know who it was. But It was both of them. Both of them? Yeah. Both stiffed me. They, they, got, they, they love got me with, they, a rip, with a damn gimmick on that. They love uh, Matt and Jeff, don't they? I guess. 
Oh, yeah, just to make it out of the window. That was more Stain, though, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Stain was a... I haven't heard a lot of good... But I don't know the guy, so, I mean, everything I'm saying is secondhand, but uh, most of that secondhand stuff wasn't very... Very <laughs> flattering? Yeah. yeah. Very flattering. And most of it's probably true. So, I don't know. But it is what it is. Anyway, so we'll be in Bluefield, West Virginia, this Saturday night. And everybody stay tuned to the Omega Facebook page and to Omega Championship Omega Wrestling fa- com. On Facebook, you just type in Omega Championship Wrestling. Is that what you type in? It is. Yes. On, okay. At Facebook. And the uh, the Facebook uh, page gets a lot more action than the uh, website does. For yeah, some reason. There's just a lot of people on Facebook. You know? Well, I mean. Social media, baby. Because. I don't think websites are included in the social media conversation. Probably not. It takes a little bit more effort to get to them. You're already on Facebook yeah. all the time anyway. Uh, just so you know, I don't. did you know you've got admin status on that page? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Well, again, I'm the grand admiral on that. Did page. you see how, you know that little chart that you see where it tells you how many people have been on the page? No, because I never look at it on my comp. I always look at it on my phone. It's not there. Something like... In the last seven days, it's got a tracker that tells you how many people have visited the page. Mm-hmm. Something like 11,000 people have visited that page. Oh, awesome. And I would love it if every single one of them would buy a ticket to the next show. Well, man, we, I'm telling you, man, we need to start a Kickstarter. Have people that, you know, want to support the product, make a, make, make a little, you know, little Kickstarter gimmick, see what happens. A little donation, a little help. Might be a good way to get those championships designed. Get some championship belts, maybe get some props. And, and you know, notice... This is something I don't do on my show. I'm not going to put a bullshit championship belt out there that's some damn... Uh, you, mean, you mean one of the old NWA tag titles with the word Omega written on it? Yeah, I'm not going to do that. No, that ain't going to happen. Like, we, had the, uh, we had the NWA women's champ on there. She was the legit women's champ. We had the Mid-Atlantic champ, real title. Yeah, when I go to a show and somebody, and they got like some replica title, I'm like, why do you even have this out here? Just don't have it. Like, because that just makes me... Like, I didn't even know that this was a bullshit company until I saw that belt. Now I know. When it's you one of the ones you can buy out of the back of WWE magazine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or over there off the gimmick table from uh, somebody selling it in a little plastic bag? Like, yeah, I, I've, I've been to shows and people have the uh, the Cruiserweight title. And it's all gimmicked up. And it's like, <laughs> that's the title I held longer than any fucking body. Yeah, and this ain't it. This ain't it. <laughs> It looks like it. Actually, that replica I got downstairs looks better than the ones I've seen. What, what are those ones? Are they just like toys that they sell? I don't or? fucking know, man. I like, have a championship. Or don't. I'd rather not have one and have something stupid. What do I say in, 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 uh, when, I, when I do help train people? Hey, if there's something you can't do... Don't do it. Don't do it. I can't do a hip toss. Don't do it. Don't do that, motherfucker. Man, my punches ain't good. Don't punch. Don't punch. Them. Forearm. Help Forearm. Them. Kick them in the balls. Don't do it. It's a good piece of advice, and it was free. Just threw that free shit right at your face. Or if you're listening to the audio version, right at your ears. No, it actually went very well. Uh, glad you guys liked that. The uh, straight to audio version was very well received last week. Does so, that work? Yeah. And, uh, and see, if you're, I'm, I'm holding a thumbs up right now, but if you're on audio, you won't see that, so I'll describe it. But our YouTube channel, they're very appreciative that we're still doing video for them. Okay. There so, you have it. Doing what we can. It's not costing any extra, is it? No. Nah, nah. Okay, but you'll notice I don't I, I didn't dress you know, normally I kinda shave a little bit and have uh, a shirt. Now it's just a tank if, top. If we, hey, if we go to straight audio, we'll just do this over the phone or something. Yeah. <laughs> Save me from driving down to Smithfield. I'll be in here in my damn pajamas. Hell yeah. I'll be laying in my bed. Anyway, man, well thanks again, man. You did a hell of a job with that Omega show. You're gonna the El Presidente of of operations or some shit. Whatever. Whatever. We're, just we're making think, it happen. We'll think of a gimmick for you. Uh, Big Daddy Mike Mav, thanks again for doing the show. We'll do it next week. Let's try to get a guest next week, man. I'm going to find out. I got a bunch of people that want to do the show. Mick Foley wants to do the show, so I got to figure out a way to do that. Um, get him on here. You going to talk him into coming here, into the studio? Um, I like Knowing to, him, he might do it. I like to get him in the studio, but he did just buzz me the other day telling me he wanted to do the show. Jericho wants to do the show, so I got to figure out a way to do all that and still do it. I mean, because every because I, I say figure out a way because the few times we've done Skype, Sometimes it works good, and sometimes it don't. And I hate to have a guy of that caliber on my show and, and not be worth the shit. Because yeah. yeah. it was fucking annoying a few times we did it, and it wasn't good. Yeah, and you don't ever know what kind of connection you're going to get that day. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, my, you know, my up, my up, mine, because it's kind of a blessing I'm in a small town because I don't have the fucking ups and downs. My, my connection with a download or upload is what it is. 
But you know, you would think like when we did, I think Masters in L.A. was was fine. But then I did somebody else in L.A. that was Stephen Bonner. Oh, yeah, Stephen Bonner. Stephen Bonner. He was down in uh, Albuquerque. His was a fucking wreck. Yeah, you couldn't understand shit. It's like no, talking it's to R two D two. R two D two was you know you know what it was. All he did was cuss in those movies, and that's why they bleeped him out. Beeped everything he said out. You know, that that was word. one vulgar fucking robot. Little bastard. And I was very offended by a lot of what he said. He's a head with shoes. I on. read the script. I'm glad they beat it out because it was always fuck this, you gold looking motherfucker. That's why he was saying this secret reveal the whole time. You know, you look like an asshole out here in gold. An ass clown. You look like an ass clown blinging out. Who ever seen a blinged out robot? What he's like? Fuck out of here. Bling, no bling. wonder we get caught, you fucking shiny gold. <laughs> out in the That's middle of the desert. Yeah, the, the sun shining. Desert, the sun shining on this. What's somebody do? An old robot. That's all. That was the script for RTP2. I don't know if you know that. That's another free information that you just got. So anyway, that's about wraps it up, man. Uh, last, last, last little bit. At Shane Helms Com, that's all my shit. Heaven forbid. Highway to Helms. Yeah.